okay? Or if you're, I don't care if you're in your 30s, you want to help, you have suggestions, particularly if you're a journeyman or another, any kind of a contractor, you want to help out, you have suggestions of, no, you have to put a carpet in because it has to be this. Then we will explain to you guys why we have to put a carpet in, okay? But if you guys say, look, we as seniors would really prefer not having a carpet in. What we're going to do is, why would we put a carpet in if it's your place? And the seniors really don't want one. We're going to do whatever we can to put it on carpet floor. Okay? But again, I'm going to ask that this kind of discussion not so much happen here. Because we're trying to uh, just do straight business here. But a committee will meet and they can bring back a report and give us a five minute report and all your questions can be answered actually at committee and then the rest of the community can be informed on what the people that feel like making an impact on the senior center want to do. And to be involved in that committee we should just call, call Fran. Call Fran to Okay. She probably doesn't know as much as you think, but what she's willing to do is be in charge. She's willing to go, she's willing to go, make the moves, spend the time, learn what needs to be done. Basically what she's doing is looking to concern. I don't need to stretch up the, the woman in the back had her hand up first, Mrs. Cronin. If you want to come right after her. Uh, do you understand know saying, Ms. Weissman? She, she may not have all the answers, but she's willing to bring together who does. I mean, I have to get in there and look and see what... And we'll make that happen. that one small room where they have the tables and chairs, or do yes. have tables and chairs there, there is tables and chairs that have been that are on order. That once they once the once the building is able to accept them, uh -huh. they will be brought there. Okay. We don't want to bring them there, work on the building, get them all funky. They still have that big building on the other side that they built for the animals. We don't. We don't even need that. You don't know that. Mm -hmm. if, if we have extra chickens, you may want some. Oh, hello. Come on now. We're not going to use them. There's, and I, I don't want to, again, I'm not going to keep the discussion going that long on this, but there is a lot more we could do with the building. This year, if we get the money from the grant, that's not even going to do what we want to do. There's no reason why we don't go after even more money. Why don't, there, why don't we have a patio out back with furniture so when it's nice and sunny, we're all sitting out back. We have nice furniture. We have this. I know you want a hot tub, we can do that, okay? <laughs> There's a lot more we can do, but we have to start with the handicap accessible bathroom and making it legal to get in, and the money is being looked at. And I, I appreciate you guys making that effort. Ma'am, I'm sorry, Anthony, go ahead. If you want to go tomorrow, I'll walk through it. Back. Or next time. Or next time. Or next time. Or next time. Or Or Saturday, if you want to do whatever. Uh, yeah. Anthony Fran. So that's that's why he's on. We can go take a look at yeah. it and see what. Yeah. It's way bigger than I thought. Because now you will have lighting and heat. That's lighting and heat are extras. That's really not something. I told you that. And you're having some bathroom giving you. Why do you want lighting and heat? You can't go heat. We're the best of them. All right. But this discussion will happen in committee. Ma'am. Uh, first off, I'd like to say thank you for having a meeting tonight here because you've got an elevator. And when you get an elevator in Village Hall, when they give us the money. You, will, you will then see more seniors attending your meetings because I don't do stairs. We're actually going to continue to try to have more meetings here. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of them don't use and they can't use stairs. And, and you can see by the amount of senior citizens that are here tonight, it's because there's an elevator. And thank you for that. No problem. I, I, that, this was a, a, something we proposed two years ago, not even putting the camera system into the, the village, but just utilizing this because ours fall under first and third week and the town falls second and fourth. So it seemed very logical, but unfortunately, the board didn't go for it. They put a camera system up there, and that's why sometimes when there's conflicts, we, we could have it up there, but the majority of the time we can have it down here. They just finished their budget meetings, and we, our budget meeting started, so uh, I am gonna ask the, the town again to come back, see if we can't utilize this building more often. 
Not every meeting, because there are conflicts, but I would like to see more and more meetings here. There's more room, and uh, and again, the elevator does help. And then I make a suggestion for next budget hearing for the village. Look into what it will cost you to get that <coughs> elevator shaft. I don't care. All right. <laughs> That's one. All right. If I can get the rest of you guys to pony up. Okay. Okay. You. I, you know what? We will get you numbers on that, but and that is uh, that's something that has been looked at for years. But it's always something that when it came down to the fact that we only had so much money, it was always put off. And I, I would love to see it. But the thing is, is that to me, utilize that second floor less and utilize this more. We have the elevator here, and hopefully with consolidation, we'll be here anyway. So I, I would rather not spend the extra money there if we're hoping to move here. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Cronin. No. First thing, you cannot put carpeting in there. I understand that. I, I, I'm going to ask, and I'm just going to ask that any other comments on that be saved for Fran Galou because we're going to work on that with Fran. It's, we're not going to make a decision on carpeting or anything else tonight. I'm not looking at any swaps. You have swaps. wheelchairs, you have walking. I know. And and, and I told you several people have approached about the carpeting, and, that's, and we're taking into consideration. Yeah. Another thing, you met and Charlie met with the seniors. One day he came. You know what we said. You said, "Oh yeah, we'll do this, we'll do that." Nothing came back. What are you talking about? When you came in to talk to the seniors, you had a piece of paper and you said, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're going to work uh, with the uh, recreation, we're going to transfer the grant over to the t town. I told you, you couldn't transfer it. We can. No, you couldn't. Yes, we can, actually. Yeah. We can. We check with the state. We can. Give me an on paper. You got it, Joan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there are kitchen facilities there now. There were. They're antiquated. Uh, again, to me, that will be right. What we'll probably do again is the minimum possible until more money comes. Right. Then we'll get the commercial stove. We'll get the bigger freezers as we get the donations. The money comes. Again, I'm not. I don't want to make all those decisions here. That's going to be a committee of you and other members that will decide on priorities and, and make it happen. Did you? We yeah. go to the church and we use both of right. the facilities as far as they let us use. We'll get you a nice spell, don't you worry. Cookies. I like cookies. <laughs> um, just regarding Lawn 9 Center Street, um, I wanted to say, you know, he got the two-week extension and he got another week extension. Um, my way of looking at it is that it's been six years. Right. So, you know, if the bank comes through, I want some sort of deadline for this Guaranteed. project to be completed. Because I don't want to wait another six years and stare at that building and still have it not be done. Um, and the other thing is, I'm going to use you know, I, I'd like some sort of guarantee that it's going to be the same type of dwelling, not an apartment building, because we have a view of the mountains from our house right, right now. And and to my, to my knowledge, he's only going to build what's there. It's going to be the same. Yeah. If, 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 if we get it, and again, I would love to see it back in the rolls, but you're right. Unfortunately, it, in, if Dan had it, next week he'd be done. He doesn't have it. That's the I'm, problem. I'm, I'm not coming out against Dan. No, no. I, now, I, I'm I all for, we're all for the rehabilitation. More than thrilled to have a beautiful dwelling there. But my point is, this has been going on and on and on and on without an end in sight for so many years now that it needs to be sorted. If we weren't meeting on Thursday, I wouldn't have waited till the next meeting. Right. If we weren't meeting on Thursday and I knew Bob would be there, I want at least four members, because this will be our first, this is a huge decision, and I want to make sure that more of the board is there when we finalize picking a vendor to tear it down. So that's, uh, he couldn't be here tonight, and we are meeting on Thursday, and that, that gave me also, they asked for a full week, the actual week extension is Wednesday, it's this coming Wednesday, it's not past Wednesday. So by giving them that, we've given them a lot of, a lot of help. So, and um, I'd also like to congratulate We'll see you guys later. Sorry. Thank Sorry, Laura. No, that's okay. Didn't want to I not just call to it back. Congratulate Charlie Murphy on her nomination. Thank as you. As one of five outstanding Orange County women. 
I think it's pretty amazing for a tiny little village like Highland Falls to have one of our very own representing us so amazingly. I'm and sorry. Could growing. you say that again before we start laughing? What did you, could you stand up to the mic? What did you just say, Mr. Nelson? I don't remember what I said. I said that mm -hmm. I just think she's amazing so and I think it's brilliant that someone from she she re no, she received what? I have a nomination for one of five outstanding Orange County women, and I think it's amazing that we have someone from our little village representing us. In Orange County, brilliant. Charlie Murphy. There are five women that were recognized in the entire county. Recognize the entire county. Charlie Murphy is one of them. I don't care. Thank how you so much for. <laughs> that, that will be coming up, and we will give you play by play of that night. <laughs> Any other comments? Mr. Weissman? No? Okay. By the way, one, one comment. Steve. If I had known no. you would be in this position someday, I would have never treated you the way I did. That's I right. apologize for that. Don't you just wait for the election to be over. Payback's coming. Payback's Sir. <laughs> Can I ask one thing? Uh, right after this gentleman. Uh, you're talking about the, the impact study with this man here. Can you... Uh, can we get uh, college students from different colleges to uh, volunteer at a time to try and do that instead of paying somebody? Because if we, because if we could, yeah, but other besides the cadets, and uh, they'll uh, they'll compete against each other, and they'll you get a lot of different uh, more impact, more ideas of fixing it up and. Uh, and I don't think it will cost us that much money instead of paying someone to do it, you know? And uh, they'll get it, and if they, whoever wins, will get a grant, you know, for the college students. Would that be a better idea to go that way? Because if we go that way, we'll get a lot more people here. You because know? we've been, we're working on the park down below, and, uh, and uh, that was brought up. And they even have, like, engineers and designers getting on board competing against each other from different schools. And whoever wins, they get a grant, so it helps out a college student, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm just putting it out there, maybe that might be a different way to go, you know. I, I think that's an excellent road, but again, they're different roads. What the co these college students are doing are different <coughs> from what uh, Mr. Dwight is, is proposing. And the only reason why I'm gonna continue to talk to Brian is because, again, his end game ends up with preparing for receiving much larger amounts of money for us. The, what the colleges do, and I, we have been involved in, over the last 10 years, we have been involved in several uh, colleges have, have done these for us. Uh, West Point's done several. Uh, the problem is, is when you deal with the colleges, it's more of a volunteer type thing, even though they're gonna get a prize. Having the, from what I've seen, Having a professional and hiring a professional, you're going to get the product you were asking for 95% of the time. When you have the colleges competing, I think we should do that anyway. And, and one, it's because the other thing by having colleges compete, I think it's an excellent idea. It's going to bring, and I would do all the surrounding colleges, it's going to bring them into our community. And if we follow through with some of the recommendations, them and their friends may come back. So I think that's an excellent idea. But again, this is not the only road we're looking at. As Charlie pointed out, we need marketing strategies as well. To, when this begins, we need marketing strategies. One, how are we going to sell to companies to come in, businesses to come in, not just to take the existing several empty storefronts, <coughs> but outside that area, outside Main Street. We do have we are talking to several major investors. We don't have the land right now for them to invest in. We are looking to work with West Point on that. It's another piece of the puzzle. A lot of different, a lot of tough pieces that we're dealing with. Um, but our first priority right now is Main Street, and I think that's an excellent idea. I think that again, that will give us a different perspective of what of what they do, and. I would, I would love to, I have no problem. In fact, we've actually talked about getting more interns involved, freight, which is a beautiful thing, in the uh, clerks area as well as in the village hall itself. We, we have not, we, we have not uh, 
looked at a lot of resources that are available. And I, I, that, that is one, I think. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, another thing with the snow removal is <laughs> when you passed that budget, did that include uh, us? No. No. Yes. Yes. Uh, your money is in last year's budget. Okay. Your, your claims have been put through. Okay. Um, we did increase this year's budget just in case we have another frightening winter like this past year. So we did increase this year's budget, snow removal. But no, your money is not in this year's budget, or this coming year's budget. It's in this past year's budget. And your, your claim is already put through. Okay, all right. And there's uh, just one other thing. Uh, when you go to do uh, the work on the, on the town, are you going to uh, call the businesses in and you know, uh, have us, you know, sit down and uh, give our thoughts about what, what we should be... Work on what town? I mean, on the village, not the town. You mean what we're, we're talking about, about, what we've been yeah, talking about? Yeah, the whole about. thing. Without question. Okay. I've actually already contacted, and I, I might have talked to your brother, and you guys confuse me, so I might have talked to your brother. I'm the good looking one. Uh, <laughs> um, I've actually, I asked, and it definitely was your brother. Um, <laughs> I did talk to him about uh, exactly that. I've talked to about 15 different movers and shakers who I consider, and I put it out twice at the meeting, that we are looking for businessmen, but businessmen that want to, I don't, I don't want to sit in to make sure that I get a couple of gigs. I want to sit in because I want to make sure that the village and the town benefits. I think that, and that, I, I, I thought it was you when I talked to your brother, so maybe that's the problem. But I have talked to over 15 business, businessmen already that of different aspects in the village to be part of this committee, to talk to talk about how we're going to take this to the next level, and what we want to see, and we're going to bring in outside investors as well, because we need money outside of this village. I think we have several people here that have the means to to build our business more than it is. They're afraid to invest because the economy is tough here right now. But we have outside money ready to come in, and but I want us to steer the ship. I don't want outside money telling us what's going to happen. I want to see the people that have been here contribute to the village, pay taxes for a lot of years, say, no, this is what we're really looking for, and see if they can help us. All right, all right. Thank you. And Thank I you. You guys are doing a good job. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Uh, I'm going to take that, uh, something. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, something that's not about the seniors or something. Really? Like that. I'm not clear what is happening and how it's going to be. The thing is, I was thinking, so a lot of uh, friends of ours, they come to the house, there are people who would like to invest, they have money, they go and do something in another part out of here. And I asked them, why don't you invest here? And I had this question, I mean this answer. When I came here 36 years ago to bring my daughters to study in Lady Cliff College, which was a wonderful college for girls, and uh, my daughter couldn't finish because the West Point but Lady Cliff College. Okay, so I had to put them to study in Marymount College in Terrytown. But when I came here and they were studying, they, we had a boutique here, they had a wonderful 10, 5 and 10 cent store, you could buy anything here. They had a bakery in town, they had a, a, this gentleman making shirts, my husband bought some shirts and made some shirts from here. We had a, a wonderful guy who makes clothes, I mean, there was movement in town. There was such a movement. And I really loved it, enjoyed it. All of a sudden, the bakery, boom. The other one, boom. The other one, boom. <laughs> then I try to understand, with the years, okay, Lady Cliff, is there some kind of communication that has to be more with West Point and the, and the village? I mean, some communication with, with each other to help each other. Not the thing they say, if they put a beauty salon in here in town, they put two there. Where? If, in West Point. If they put a, a barber shop here, they have already a barber shop there. When they had the, this bowling sometime, they had it here, now they have it there. So every time it's getting a little bit more and more, you know, very difficult for the people here to think to admit. My son-in-law had a building just next to the police. He said, it will forever, whatever. He said, I can't manage it anymore. Why? Some people say, oh, because the taxes. We have to pay high taxes now, more high taxes. And then 
we don't have the people to come into town. Why? Because everything absorbs West Point. I worked in West Point for 14 years. I love West Point. But you know, there was a president of one country who came to this place to visit West Point with his son and some personality. I told you they were coming, remember? Yep. Okay. Why didn't that communication be with the people of town, of you, and people around? To do something, to, to put up a little flag, to do something, some communication, some people. I mean, it's the way of giving and receiving. So sometimes then people who live here, I live in Fort Montgomery, uh, the family been in Fort Montgomery for my thousands and hundreds of years in here. What happened is, they're afraid. They're afraid to, to make a business here because the only one they see is every Saturday, Sunday, and every day is Andy's. The whole people going to have breakfast in Andy's. <laughs> but what else? You know? So is it the communication that must be more that they help the village and the village could understand? And, they, and when people come, we are renting our house every year for a whole week for our parents of baseball. And we, we just don't finish renting, renting this that we have for two more years. So we have to get out of our house for a whole week for the graduation because there's no place for them to stay. There is no more hotels, there's no other places. They get crazy. They pay for our house $5,000 to stay one week. Sweet. A week, yeah, a week. And we go, well, we go to Myrtle Beach, and we go to California, <laughs> where we want to go with $5,000. You know what I mean? Well, to answer your question, if something has to be done. The, if our one of the problems is, and you're right, as, uh, as Mrs. Weissman said, back in the day, uh, I was just talking to a gentleman yeah. today, back in the day, we had the record for most bars per square mile oh, yeah. in the southern town. You had just males at West Point. So you had a lot of females coming in plus parents. You had Lady Cliff, a ton of people there right across the street from the businesses. Bottom line, there was a lot more people circulating in the village because the cadets, <coughs> there was nothing for them on West Point. They would all come into the village. It was a different time. That's why when we had, count them, 52 <coughs> bars in this village. Not the town. You in the village. Ball, yeah, yeah, you were in all of them. We, uh, we're different. We're different now. There were, and, and the businesses were different. But times have changed everywhere. Uh, half of the small businesses that have left have left because of Walmart, of Home Depot, of these kind of things. There's a lot of different reasons why we're having trouble. But the big reason with West Point is it is illegal for some of the businesses that are on, and I'll say it, nothing against West Point. It's illegal for some of the businesses that are on West Point right now. Against, again, uh, federally, it's illegal. The problem is, because legally, West Point is not allowed to, to compete with the local businesses around their communities. That is a law, it's a federal law. The problem is, we have done nothing to enforce that law. It's a similar thing with Lady Cliff. Even though things were done behind doors, we didn't make a big enough effort to hold on to it. Can we take on the government? I believe we can. I believe the problem is people don't think we can. They're our government. That's our government, not a, a place for someone else. We're not getting loud enough in certain areas. Over the last 20 years, We've allowed the barber shops, the beauty shops, Taco Bell, Burger King, Subway. All of those should have been in the village. We had a Subway. Oh, it has nothing. It was mismanaged. A Subway can, can maintain here. A Taco Bell can maintain here. The problem is, is the coordination. This is something Tom is trying to bring to our, well, our business community. Our business community, very strong certain years very weak for certain years for different reasons. But we didn't adapt over the last 20 years. And when West Point said, we want a Taco Bell, we didn't say no. I do want to thank Colonel Rideout because he did tell me that he was personally responsible 
for slowing down an Applebee's that was going on West Point and telling them, no, you can't come on here, you have to consider the community first. So we do have friends there, and we are working with them right now, and I have brought that information to Colonel Rideout and General Castle because there are other things, again, with the hotel right across the street, the, in the visitor center, not the Thayer, but the one, the new Holiday Inn. Again, not supposed to be there. And if it's there, not supposed to be on a military base without benefiting oh, the, five the village. Inn. Yes, mm -hmm. which is now a commercial entity. As a five-star inn, yes, it should be there. It was there to house people coming into West Point before they got their housing. Right. That was the point. Yeah, then it became a hotel, and now it's a commercial establishment that's thinking that you don't need a West any ID to do. Anyone can go there now. It's a regular hotel that we're not benefiting from. This is something Charlie and I are working on now. Again, not something unfortunately can happen overnight, because this happened over the last 20 years, and this community did nothing about it. That's the problem. We allowed the West Point, and I said it. If I was a businessman, and I had the opportunity to get Lady Cliff, and nobody stopped me, I'm taking it. And I'm taking every other business and taking it for myself, and I'm gonna make a ton of money. So was West Point wrong? Kind of. But they're doing it because they're, they, they were trying to respond to their people. Their people wanted a Taco Bell. Their people wanted a, a, a Burger King. They wanted a Starbucks. We weren't providing it. So they went ahead and pushed for it. What we needed to do over the last 20 years was say, stop, put in one of our stores. We had one or two here. Another component to that, and I, this is the last thing I'll say on it, because this is something we are working on, and, I, and you do need to know this. Another component of that is our local economy. When you have three or four restaurants that don't want to see any more restaurants, kind of tough. You know, we, we could be the only town on the planet that doesn't have two commercial restaurants in front of a Holiday Inn Express. We might be the only one, I think, that doesn't have two restaurants sitting in front of Holiday Inn Express. That is a combination of how many people are coming through our town, but also local businesses not supporting growth. Because they're afraid it's going to affect my dollar. What they don't understand is, and I talked to two, two today, I talked to two owners today, because one was like, oh, we don't need any more. I'm like, here's the thing. Nobody's coming here anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. They're going to Monroe, they're going over the mountain, they're not even considering stopping by Shades or Park or Andy's. And we have good restaurants. And we have good restaurants. The problem is, we have three. And we're done. And I went to them this week. So I'm done, okay? <laughs> We need five more eateries on Main Street. Variety. We need an Indian. We need a Greek. We need an Italian. We need Czechoslovakian. Something other than the three great restaurants that serve everything. We need, we need character in our community, and we can't be afraid of the competition. When American Burrito came in, competition, Rudy's right next door. Rudy didn't crawl, oh my God, here we go. He went ahead and put everything he had Mexican on a flyer going out on every one of his pizzas. He, he went, and that's what businesses do. You rise to the challenge, he, he bettered his prices, he bettered his product. We win when there's competition. We need more stores, we need more restaurants, and we need more stores on our storefront. But that's exactly why, as what Brian, we're gonna start with Brian, work with other groups, because we have to market to businesses themselves. Then we have to be able to let them know that we will support them. We can't just, we've had a ton of businesses in some of these things. You know, when we've had businesses that should have stayed and they weren't supported. They have to know that if they come in and they make the investment, we'll be there. As long as the quality's there. Not that anyone can walk in. But stores like Ben Franklin, and I remember it too when I was young. Wow. I, I wish they, well, they can be supported. I know that we had an antique store. Uh, beautiful. A lot of great things. We're not Cold Spring, unfortunately. But that support over 12 antique stores in two blocks. They're all doing well. That's what they go to Cold Spring for. We're not them. 
we have to figure out, and we need outside people to help us, what's going to work here? Because over the last 10 years, it's not working. It's not working. Benny Yazetta, when he was mayor, he fought and to help us with the lady club. IBM wanted to come in Several and take groups. over there, but it wasn't. The church gave it to West Point. Uh, yes. Excuse me, but you know what? It's funny that when they put this tank, the yeah. tank that made a tank there in the church, where they live, they made this tank, and the tank is pointing out since the papers are, the priest was so mad, he said, why couldn't they move it to another He was so we mad. We had two stores, we had clothing stores, we had everything. We didn't have to go to Newburgh. We also had the bus company that ran a bus every hour going to West Point, or going to Newburgh. But that's, and that's something that, Water Street. as much as we bring it up, where we may need, along with us, as uh, Mr. McCarthy pointed out, along with 12 to 15 business people, maybe some individual citizens, working with outside people that haven't been enclosed in here their whole lives right. and haven't, don't know, you know what's working in Jersey, you know what's working in North Carolina, that could work here. I've seen it. They have the same kind of community you have. They, we, we can't work like Newburgh. We can't work like New Windsor. Right. We don't have the people, we don't have the numbers. But people outside, professionals that do this for a living, you have 6,000 people, right. you're enclosed, we have six other communities like that. This is what works for them. We have to reach outside our community. We're not doing it ourselves, we're not fixing the problem. Right. And this, we've got the best land mm -hmm. around. This is a jewel, okay? We've let it get a little rough, a little tarnished. We gotta polish it up, and this will be the best place to live, bottom line. Again, it was before, it can be again. I talked to two people the other day. I said, we have to make this community so that your son, who's grown, he's not three, he's 22, is upset that he can't get a house in this town. That's how we've got to do it. It's These younger people have to want to say, yeah, I'm going to work down the city, but I'm going to live here because the community is so great. And it's a good community, too. The people are great. We've got to fix the infrastructure. Mr. Devereaux, please. Patrick, uh, great words. Uh, of course, we need to move on, I know. I just want to clarify a couple of points. Yes. Since I was on the other side of the, the street, and now I've lived here for a lot of years. Um, to correct something you said, West Point did not take Ladyfoot. West Point let it sit there for several years. I worked on that project mm -hmm. from West Point, okay? And nothing happened. There was some interest, but it wasn't pushed some way. <coughs> I don't know about that side, but I knew about West Point side. They did hold off. They didn't just run the grab. Ultimately, no one came forward, so therefore, West Point worked with the church and so forth. And, and I had a daughter that went there as a freshman, had to leave. So uh, I know a little bit about Ladyfoot College, too. I think something we have to factor in and remember that West Point is a college. And it has 4,400, give or take, cadets. Essentially, everything that is up there, whether it's a ski slope or a golf course that a lot of people use from the community, they're for the cadets. The others sort of like myself, I'm retired army. I can use a lot of the facilities there. Essentially, I won't deal with the Holiday Inn Expresses in the old five-star rent area, but essentially what you say is correct, but West Point is not doing anything that it hasn't been allowed to do by regulation, by authority. And so every camp station, you know, wherever around the world, Army, Navy, Air Force, whatever, they have all of the, the restaurants they have up there, be it a Burger King or whatever it happens to be. But I've been in a lot of hosts all over the world. And so they're not doing something that's, they have Eisenhower Hall. Who enjoys Eisenhower Hall? A lot of people. More so, perhaps, than the cadets do. So I, I want, it's one thing to lean on West Point, and, but we can't expect them to do everything for us. 
and nor can we, you know, not do things for ourselves. So I just think that, uh, you know, we have to correct the whole matter, make sure that we're saying something that's accurate, and, uh, you know, with, with accurate information, you can move on in, in a, you know, positive way. But if there are inaccuracies or whatever, innuendos that are floating around, then uh, that's not good for our community, it's not good for West Point. So I think that's about it. I agree 110%. Just to, just to put a point real quick, you're right. And, and exactly what you said was correct. Um, and there are things on, on post. Bottom line, if we were proactive, there's a good chance they wouldn't be on post. That way the post and us could enjoy it. Hold on. Patrick, but let me, wait, wait, no, no, no. The cadets. Let me, let me, let me, let me the I will not bring any cadets. Because they can't I, have, I know, post. I know. I do have to point, don't give me the half a hand. <laughs> I do have to point out that, again, working together, mm. West Point has opened up the golf course, has opened up the ski slope to the locals, has opened up the bowling alley, has opened up se yeah, several other things allowing us to come in. Okay? This is part of the working together. Now, as a board, what we have to do is, and this is what we're working on, Taco Bell is a commercial industry that's paying no taxes. We're going to be working on that. We need to get the taxes. That doesn't hurt West Point. Doesn't hurt the cadets. The military, silly. The military doesn't pay taxes because that's part of the benefits of being military. But this is not just a military installation anymore. It is a tourist attraction. And there's millions of people that are coming through, not paying any taxes, that are non-military. That's where we capitalize. Do I, am I, is it killing me that Taco Bell's on West Point? No, I love Taco Bell. And I go up there, and I use it. But it's killing me that, that we're not paying taxes. It's killing me that that majority of the things that are open to the public on West Point are not paying taxes. So that's something this board is working on. Okay, West Point, since I've been involved, not because of me, but being involved and, and working with the West Point people, they want to work with us. They want to do everything we can. To, this village is their village. They don't want to stay on West Point. They want to come outside the gates. They want a great village to come to, and they want to work with us. Uh, uh, the Board of Visitors, which has fiscal oversight of the Academy, it's made up of U.S. Senators, Congress people, and presidential appointees. They met for the first time in a long time at West Point a week ago. And the new chairman of that board is Congressman John Shimkus. And this is a golden opportunity because if you look at their last three sets of minutes, he has called upon the academy every single time to set up a meeting with the local government officials because his background also includes local government service and he is very sympathetic uh, to the needs of our community. Um, I think we should continue to support him. He was uh, very friendly at the last meeting, certainly General Chaslin, as his wife is from the area. He's very receptive. I would ask that we try to set up a meeting with Colonel Rideout and perhaps people from the old Five Star now, Holiday Inn Express, to begin the negotiation process to get payments in lieu of taxes, to find out um, through the assessor's office what that building would be assessed at. We may not be able to levy taxes on the land right. it's sitting on because it's leased from the federal government, but we need to, to move on this and it's got to be a collaboration. Yeah. Um. Alright, uh, I'll be really quick. Uh, one, I want to thank uh, Charlie Murphy and uh, the, the representatives that you brought from many different avenues, I believe, uh, for coming to the last chamber meeting. Uh, I think it was really productive, so I really appreciate that. Um, and I 
had a meeting with several of the West Point cadets that were here tonight, uh, James Berkman and a couple of other guys, and uh, I don't know if it was mentioned, but they're, they're putting together uh, their thoughts, and this is a, you know, like a senior project uh, on how to help revitalize the town uh, from a, uh, an aesthetics point of view. Um, to that end, I also think, you know, and I don't know the previous uh, 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 individual that was running West Point, but it seems to me that Colonel Rideout seems to be very helpful with trying to build up the town. It's just my general impression on that. Uh, the village and the town, I should say. Um, I'm going to be writing, and this is what one of the things that came from our meeting uh, from a couple weeks ago, is I just spoke with Mary Jane Pitt from the... Uh, uh, from the Highlands record, News of the Highlands, and I'm going to write a, a little 400 word op-ed piece, uh, and this is, uh, by the way, this is going on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is going to be something specifically for the owners of the storefronts uh, up and down Highland Falls, and also the, uh, the people, the landlords, is an op-ed piece about taking pride in your storefront, taking pride in your location, um, because it's, you know, like we've all been communicating this, it is a team effort. Uh, vision can do a lot of great work and create the aesthetics that support people wanting to come into the town, but from the real estate and property and store location side, there's got to be something that attracts people to go into the stores or pick up the phone and dial for an order or something like that. So I'm going to write that op-ed piece. Um, what was the name of the congressperson that you mentioned that is? John Shipkiss, I believe he's represents Illinois. Okay, all right. Um, I'd really like to learn more about the uh, you know, coming from around because that sounds like a really good meeting. Um, and also the West Point cadets are setting up a meeting with Senator Larkin Right. Yeah, to, uh, you know, to have that meeting and talk about the revitalization that I mentioned. The next chamber meeting is at Maria Bonita's on April 15th, tax day. Once you're done with it, your taxes, come over, have a drink, and that's it. Thank you so much, Tom. Jimmy. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to thank the board, first of all, for working with MWR, and thank MWR for getting together and opening up some of the venues that we can use at West Point. I would ask the board to also reach out to MWR and see if we can get the town of Highlands residents the opportunity for hunting and fishing on West Point. Um, it would not only generate more revenue for MWR, but generally speaking, a lot of the people that live in the town and in the village um, do work at West Point, but there are some of us that don't, that don't have that opportunity to utilize the facilities. Uh, there's 17 beautiful lakes there. Uh, a lot of times you go on, there's no one there. Um, so if we could get that opened up, um, it's not only going to bring revenue to them, but it would benefit the presence in the town village. Excellent, thank you. Any other comments? Move to close? Board, uh, board comments? No. Move to close. Um, well, thank you, Tom, for being here. I, I came prepared with the announcement about uh, the next meeting for um, the chamber. There, there is an active Main Street group that has also been meeting um, separately, and they, they attended that session with the chamber as well, uh, looking toward um, events or activities that could be done in conjunction with graduation that, again, would bring people into town and work with our um, merchants. Um, in fact, the theme is step up. Um, and more should be coming out on that. I think that that group tend, intends to meet on April 16th. Um, a new member of our community um, is married to a retired colonel. She's, um, she and her husband are renovating uh, a fabulous old historic house. Um, but I, I met her on the street. And she's a dog owner and um, she's very enthusiastic about uh, getting involved perhaps with the Main Street Committee to head up uh, 
uh, a cleanup campaign, and I would applaud her for doing that. She, she's very concerned about the fact that our, our dog ordinance about cleaning up after your canine seems to be uh, not as well enforced as it might be. Um, in view of the fact that Earth Day is coming up on April 22nd, I would encourage everyone in the community to do their own part to uh, clean up the streets. If you're walking on a sidewalk and you see a piece of trash, I guarantee there's a receptacle nearby. Please um, help us keep our community clean. And finally, I, I have a, an anonymous uh, contributor of ideas who has sent three um, pieces of uh, clippings, and it, all very useful stuff. Uh, some of it I've uh, referred to the Main Street Committee. Um, the last one, though, was uh, addressed to Wyant Green Lane. And by golly, our crack post office got it to me in spite of the address. Um, I would love to hear from this anonymous support uh, person for the community. Um, please send it to 27 Web Lane. And uh, I, I would love to know who our benefactor is because it is useful information. And I encourage him or her to keep sending material. That's it. Who's close? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Close. Thank you so much, everyone. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Come on. Come on.